Alhamdulillah, 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 Inshallah, we had a start a session this morning. This, yes, this morning, and we had added a, another book in our curriculum. And inshallah, I would like to continue in this chapter, but uh, the good uh, news that I found that the book exists in English and even I found it in my box. Mm. So at least for your knowledge, so for those who like inshallah to uh, get the book or order it, uh, so it's available because I had asked about it if it's available in English or not and Brother Sabri took the name to check it on the internet and all the stuff. So this is a book that supposed to be the translation of what I was doing this morning. But we will continue, inshallah, with the broken English, because when there is a broken English, it wake up the people more and say, what this man is talking in English or Spanish or what it is. Mm. But if anybody wants to enjoy and get all the information, this is a book here, available. You can uh, order it, or if you want my assistant, I will order it for you. I recommend it. Although, like I say before, you never going to find a book perfect, 100%, 100%, every hadith in it is going to be authentic. But, still, it's something good, that inshallah, and uh, I advise that you can make it part of your Islamic library at home, inshallah. Zabullah khair. But you don't have any available now? No, I can order it. Okay. This is what I can do. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Inshallah. This morning we have spoke about the importance of the uttering and the word, okay? Please, can you? Thank you. No. Okay, thank you. The, the seriousness of talking and uh, the importance of watching what we say. So we're going to continue with uh, what we had said. Those who did not hear the first segment, you can go to uh, YouTube and under the bar of searching you can put what 2kh okay uh, it's saying that the hadith it shows the seriousness of uttering words with no paying attention or reflecting about what he's saying that hadith Bilal ibn al-Haris al-Muzani that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying in the ahad إن أحدكم لا يتكلم لا يتكلم بالكلمة من رضوان الله ما يظن أن تبلغ ما بلغت فيكتب الله له بها رضوانه إلى يوم يوم يلقاه وإن أحدكم لا يتكلم بالكلمة من سخط الله ما يظن أن تبلغ ما بلغت فيكتب الله له بها سخطه إلى يوم يلقاه indeed one of you utter a word he is not assuming how good it is or the impact of it, okay? <coughs> but as a result of this one word, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will record such a great reward for him continuously until the day of a judgment or until he die or until he meet with Allah. And also one of you will utter a word is not pleasing to Allah. Not assuming it's going to be so serious, okay? But it is so serious with Allah, and Allah will write His displeasure for him until he die or until he meet with Allah, okay? So we have to be careful about what we say. And the hadith which in the Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Saying in hadith which reported by Abu Huraira, "Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir falyakul khayran aw liyasmut." Whosoever believes in Allah and the day of judgment, let him say, let him or her, okay? Because the same way that a man is obligated, a woman is obligated. What applies for a man applies for a woman, okay? Unless Islam will make it different that this ruling only for women or only for, okay? So the Prophet ﷺ said, whosoever believes in Allah in the day of judgment, let him say something good or what? Remain silent. 
If you have nothing good, benefit the people, reminding the people about Allah, or try to teach them something beneficial in their life or in their deen. So stop talking. Okay? Because this is safety, safety for you, security. When you talk, everything is recorded. And maybe half of it will be trash. Because it has nothing to benefit the people, neither it has anything to teach them about their deen or to remind them about the Akhirah. So you begin in sin. So safety is what? And reality of faith is what? Say something good or be quiet. Uh, the, the previous hadith Al-Qama is saying كم من كلام قد منعنيه حديث بلال the hadith that we say before this one about a person utter a word not paying attention to it and Allah caused him to understand this, his displeasure with him until the day of judgment so Al-Qama is saying that this hadith had prevent him from many things that he wants to talk about. Okay? That means this one single hadith, he made that a change in his life, that he have many things that he wants to discuss or to say, but he is not saying it because be afraid that he may utter a word that Allah is not pleased with it, and his displeasure will be continuous with him until the day of the judgment. The Prophet وسلم, telling us about the seriousness, seriousness of the tongue compared to the list of the limbs of the body. He say, إذا أصبح العبد فإن الأعضاء كلها تكفر لسان تقول اتق الله فإنما نحن به فإذا استقمت استقمنا وإن عوججت عوججنا. So say all the limbs of your body. Okay, every morning come to son of Adam, your legs, your feet, your arms, your eyes, your ears, everything, and say to your tongue, okay, you better watch, because you the imam, we are the followers. If you go straight, we will do also the same, we go straight. If you act foolish and you do crooked, okay, you go crooked, we're going to be also deviating from the Surat al Mustaqim. Inna ma nahnu bik. Indeed, we are every day, your limbs are submitting this to the tongue. Like a conference meeting, every day. Because when you say something good, you will hear something good, the result will be good, okay. You are not going to act in anything foolish. But when you say something bad, you're going to hear something else bad, and now may get in violence, maybe your hand acting bad. All this comes as a result of what? The tongue. Okay? So all the limbs are looking to the tongue to be the leader of any good that going to happen to them that day or any evil that it may happen to them in that day. It says speech is your speech is your prisoner. If he leaves your mouth, you became his prisoner. The speech is your captive. That means you locking him up, you locking your speech. You keep in your speech in your mouth. You are not saying anything. So now you have control over your captive. You are the guard. Okay? So as long as you didn't talk, now your tongue and whatever you want to say is under your captivity. But when you let it go, now you be the one in captivity. Because what going to say, this is what is going to Decide or gives the direction. Okay? 
you can see this, all right, is, is a high, beautiful meaning, if you can understand it, that you're going to have control over something. But when you let it go, now you became controlled by, okay? So as long as you didn't speak, now the speech could not, people could not act on something until you say something. You keep your mouth shut, now you control of the situation, okay? Now you let your mouth say something, you are not in control of, of the situation anymore. You lost it, okay? Now you're going to have to face the result of what he said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran, ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد There is no uttering that a human being utter except two angels there to record whatever he or she had said. If it's good or bad, it's going to be for you or against you. Anything, anything, okay, does not have to be a short or long sentence. Is it going to be a paragraph or a subject? <laughs> Whatever word, two letters, three letters, you say it, it's going to be recorded. So, now you're going to make you understand your reckoning in the day of judgment more serious. You sit, you're making your case worse by talking too much. Okay? Because you would have to answer about everything that you had said. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and help us to guard our tongues. He said, tongue has two kind of defects. When a son of Adam free from one, he fallen into the other one. That you could not be safe. With your tongue, there is two problems can happen with your tongue. One that you're going to talk, or one you're going to be silent. If you talk, it can be against you, and if you remain silent, it can be against you. How? He says that because both of them are a serious crime in the hereafter. Because the problem of being silent, if a person in a situation, okay, that he's supposed to say something and he didn't say, you be like a, a silent shaitan, somebody, you understand, doing something wrong <coughs> and he didn't correct it, he didn't say something about it, you're going to be questioned about it. Because the Prophet وسلم, told us that whosoever among you says something objectionable to the Islam, let him change it with his hand. You could not so say something against it. You could not at least hate it with your heart. So he say in both cases, you are going to be judged. If you talk, what did he say? And if you're silent, you was silent in a situation you were supposed to talk. Why you didn't talk? You see? Yeah. And a person who may say something, but is not saying something truthful, okay? So now you involved in idle talk. And most of the people are in between these two conditions. And some people go to the extreme in one or the other. The people who take the middle course are the winner. Those people who do not let their tongue talk in the evil, and also when they see something evil, they talk against it. So when they utter anything, it's not going to be against them. And neither is going to harm him in the hereafter. 
they say some Muslims they will come with a lot of blessings in the day of a judgment so great and so high as much as mountains but his tongue had destroyed all these blessings with his bad deed and his, what he said and maybe a person will come with a lot of sins so high, so great as the mountains but it's been destroyed and been removed as a result of the remembrance of Allah and whatever connected to the zikr of Allah so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to watch our tongue, our saying and that we utilize it in the proper way that inshallah this is a reminder May Allah make the speaker and the listener benefit from it, inshaAllah. Amen. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, and Allah knows best. Yes. Imam, maybe you've heard this before. There's an old saying that on Monday you take shahada, and on Friday, we're going to get the cut from. Okay? I say that to begin. Because I He's going to wait until Friday? Until <laughs> and every Tuesday. <laughs> right. Okay. Maybe on Tuesday, we're going to get the cut He takes Shahada Monday, and yeah. we, on, Tuesday, on Tuesday, he wants to get the cut from. want to get the cut from. Okay. So, with that being said, uh -huh. I wish that you have more time to spend about the significance in guarding with your tongue. Hmm. That being said, with all of what you say, Oftentimes, people hear, with respect to the hadith, if you see something wrong, you change it with your hand, you change, you know, uh, you know, which is the weakness of faith. And it's, it's, it's very, very important, inshallah, that I think you spend some additional time, inshallah. you know, um, and, and, and because sometimes people hear um, what is written, opposed to the allocution or the exercising you, know, you see of, of the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa whosoever see the evil let him change it with his hand okay and if he could not okay so now it comes a lesser degree with the tongue now if he could not alright and the Amr bil Maruf and Nahi an al-Munkar enjoying the good and forbidding the bad is a big subject. Absolutely. And you have to know when and the where and how. And also knowing that the thing is evil because some people may jump to something assuming that evil but is not an evil. Mm -hmm. Okay? But because he see people are not doing it, like I said as example, in Egypt if somebody see me praying with my shoes, they may be beat me up. At least 40, 50 years ago, people got better now in their information, knowing the Sunnah. But somebody in that time when I was a child, if you pray with your shoes, people will call you a Kafir, are you a Christian, or are you a Jew, how are you praying with your shoes? Although that this is a Sunnah, that sometimes they pray with their shoes. Yes. So part of Dealing with ma'roof and munkar, you have to know what is munkar and what is ma'roof. So you did not put the table upside down that you may enjoy the munkar and forbid the ma'roof. And also that the person has the capability and that the person's no harm going to fall in him beyond what he can deal with it is a big subject. And this is the reason that we try every day, take little bit, little bit, inshallah, reminder so we can learn about our deen. Same way, like he said, a person doesn't take shahada Monday and want to give the khutbah Tuesday or Friday. <laughs> Same thing, we could not drop the whole deen in one class, but the Muslims, inshallah, they have to do two things. If there is opportunity to learn, they have to learn. The second thing, they have to make some effort in their own. As a result of this, I said, where is the book that is available? And most of the boxes that is not available, I try to bring it 
or is that they see more beneficial. So plus we have a library in the mosque, okay? Plus there is a lot of information in the internet. So Muslims do not have to be, they shouldn't be lazy. They need to make a special effort to educate themselves about their deen. And believe it or not, if Muslims in general, Arab or non-Arab, born Muslim or converted, okay, if they give importance to their deen and learning about their deen the same way they care about their education and their degree, our condition can be much better than what we are today. But most of the Muslims, they satisfy that they know how to make salah and this it, and they satisfy to go to mosque in Juma and this it. And when the Eid come, you understand, they will go and hug, kissing and all these things and eat, you understand, sweets and baklava and after this bye-bye, see you next, next Eid. It doesn't work like this, okay? But inshallah, we one step or halfway, you understand, towards our improvement and learning, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. We have a good night, everybody, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, have a safe drive. Drive carefully, it's no snow tonight. Thank <laughs> you.